In this presentation, we're going to enter a sales receipt into QuickBooks Online. The sales receipt being the form that we will typically use when we're going to make a sale and receive payment at the same point in time. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. Before we go to the reports, let's first take a look at the flowchart of what we're going to do. This is in the QuickBooks desktop program, just considering the flowchart. In prior presentations, we have entered an invoice and then received the payment on it. If we're in a situation where we're going to get paid at the same point in time, for example, if we're selling guitars in the shop, someone buys it in the shop, brings it up to the front desk, and we're going to make the sale on it. You can think of this as more of the cash register type of transaction. We can jump right to the create sales receipt, which will record the actual payment as well as the revenue at this point in time. In essence, kind of combining these two steps. That's why it's over here in like the flow chart. It's cutting off those two steps. And so that's what we're going to do this time. Be very similar to the invoice, but different. And again, when would you use this form as opposed to this form? When you receive payment at the same point in time, you use this form. When those two things differ, when you get, in, you know, you do the work first and then build a client, you use this form, the invoice. Okay, let's go back to our information. Let's open up our reports first. We'll do the customary open up the reports. We're going to be opening up the balance sheet. First, our favorite report on the balance sheet. We're going to change the dates up top. So we're going to scroll on up. We're going to change those dates from uh, 010120 to 123120. Then we're going to run that report. We're then going to duplicate the tab up top. Going to right click on the tab up top. Going to duplicate that tab. And then I'm going to go back to the tab to the left, up top to the left, and then go down to the reports. And then we're going to make the profit and loss report or generate or create the profit and loss report by clicking on the old P and L profit and loss income statement. We're going to be using the same date ranges up top, of course, those being 010120 to 123120. We're going to run that report. And then we're going to duplicate it. We're going to go to the, uh, the tab up top, right click on it and duplicate it. So there we have that. Now I'm going to do this one more time with our trustee trial balance. We're going to go down to the reports. We're going to go look at the trial balance and I'm going to search for the trial balance. It's not yet a favorite report, but I'm going to open it so much that it's going to be up in the favorites at some point. I would think it should be. And then I'm going to go back up top and change the dates again from 010120 to 123120 run that report then we're going to duplicate that tab right click it on the tab up top and we will duplicate it all right so now we can kind of think about what's going to happen when we make the sales receipt it's going to be much the same very similar as when we made the invoice so if we were to go to the balance sheet then we would say what's going to happen with the sales receipt well the thing that'll differ is instead of accounts receivable going up we're going to have an increase to the cash, not going to the checking account yet, but going to undeposited funds. The other side would be on the P&L. So if I then go to the P&L, everything else is going to look very similar to the invoice. The revenue is going to go up, but there's going to be a difference between the revenue and the amount of cash we get or amount of money we get. That's going to be the sales tax, which means there's going to be a liability if we're selling things that are that are have sales tax as opposed to services in which we generally are here we're selling guitars and that's going to be increasing the sales tax payable in this case going to the california department of tax and fees administration and then we also have the inventory going down that's going to be an asset portion so up top in the assets we know that the inventory is going to be going down and we know on the profit and loss side that the cost of goods sold the expense related to us consuming the inventory is going to go up the difference between the increase in revenue and the cost of goods sold will be the effect on the net income if you were to take that a look at that on the trial balance you could see all of that on one form which is nice right you got undeposited funds would go up the other side is going to be down here on the income statement side sales is going to go up the difference between those two is going to be the sales tax which is going to increase the liability the liability then is going to go up that's here then there's going to be inventories going down that's an asset up top on the trial balance it's going to be going down the other side is going to be on the income statement bottom of the trial balance cost of goods sold and expense account going up all right let's actually do it now we're going to go to the get great guitars first tab and we're going to be opening up a new and we have this one right up on top it's make a sale so they're going to call it make a sale here again a different name than it used to be and then when you get to the form it's called a sales receipt 
which is the traditional name we've always had for this type of form, even with the desktop version. Then we're going to create the customer. Now, this is going to be a customer called String Music, which we don't yet have. Therefore, I'm going to type in that customer name. I'm going to type in String Music. Then I'm going to select Tab, and we're going to add that. I'm going to do the simple add. Obviously, if it was a customer, we would want the detail. We would want to get their email address and send them the, our newsletters and all that stuff. But I'm just going to say save now for this problem. Uh, then we have the, I'm tabbing through. We've got the email information. And I'm going to put this back down to the 100. So I'm at uh, the billing. We're going to say the date then is going to be. So I'm going to say this happened on the 16th. So I'm going to use the plus button to go up to the 16th. I'm using this on the keyboard. And then we're going to have. Then I'm going to pick up the payment method. And the payment method I'm going to say is cash. It's going to be in the store. We're imagining someone basically picking this up in our Get Great Guitar store. Then the deposit. Now once again it's defaulting to the check-in account. I'm going to take that to the undeposited funds because I'm getting, I'm getting cash and I want to be able to take all the cash that I get during the given day and then take that to the bank and deposit it in one lump sum. And therefore, if I, if I deposit it in a bunch of different deposits in here, it'll show up differently on the bank statement as is in our books, making it difficult to do a bank reconciliation. Therefore, I'm going to put it into undeposited funds, then deposit them in a lump sum at the end of the day when we go to the store. If you have a cash-based system or you have a store where you're collecting cash during that time period, this is probably the way you want to do it because that'll make, again, it'll make the bank reconciliation easy to do. So we're looking for a uh, semi, an Epiphone semi-hollow body. So we're looking for an Epiphone semi-hollow body. So this is the one. It's, a, it's an ESH. So the Epiphone semi-hollow, that's the one we want. It should be taxable. It should be populating there the taxable item. It's going to be a taxable item. And so that looks good. Now, there's our information. And again, if you want to recalculate the sales tax, if you have some other sales tax calculation because of your location and you want to practice this problem uh, directly or exactly, you could select the C math and you could change that sales tax number if you so choose. Now, what's going to be happening to this form or when we when we record this, we know that the sales receipt means that uh, cash is going up, right? It's not it's not going to AR. That's what's different from the invoice. Therefore, it's going to be going to undeposited funds as we selected here or the checking account. If you select the checking account, we're putting it into undeposited funds. The other side is going to be much the same. Everything else is much the same as an invoice. The other side uh, and that's going to be going up, by the way, for the full amount that we're going to receive from the customer, including the sales tax of the 438. The other side is going to be going to uh, sales or revenue or income, but only for the 400 that we get to keep, not for the amount that, they, that the government made us take from the customer to give to them. The difference being the amount that the government made us take from the customer to give to them is the $38 in sales tax. It's going to create a liability, the liability going up by the $38. Then we're also going to have the inventory going down. It's going to be going down by an amount we don't see on the sales receipt, although the sales receipt will be driving it to be going down. That's because we don't want the customer to see it on the sales receipt, although we want the sales receipt to drive the decrease in the inventory. The other side is going to be going to cost of goods sold. That on the profit and loss report, increasing an expense and decreasing the uh, net income. So let's go ahead and record this and see what will happen. I'm going to go ahead and select the drop down here, which is kind of like a drop up. And we want to say save and close. I'm going to select the save and close. And then we'll go to our trusty uh, trial balance. Let's take a look at it first because we can see everything kind of on one page here. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the trusty trial. I think it did it by itself, but I'm going to refresh it again because sometimes it doesn't do it. Okay, so what's going to happen here? We know that the undeposited funds is going to be going up. So here's undeposited funds. We got a lot in. We really need to go to the bank because we got a lot in there. So we got undeposited. There's the sales receipt. Note the name now. It's called a sales receipt here. If I scroll to the right, there's the amount. There's the sales receipt, 438. If I select that and click on it, that will take us to our form for the sales receipt. There it is. That's the total amount, the 438, including the sales tax. Closing that back out. Scrolling back up top, where's the other side going to be going? It's going to be going to revenue. So revenue, we can actually see on the bottom of the trial balance in the revenue section. And there's the revenue, the sales of product revenue. Let's select that item and see if we can check this one out. Music uh, string stuff or string music. Here we have it. 400, different amount. Not the same amount as it was before because this doesn't include the sales tax. We select that item. 
and scroll down. I have to make it a little bit smaller so we can see the totals. It's only the sales amount, not including the sales tax. Closing this back out, well, what about the sales tax? Where's the sales tax? Where does it go? Well, it's going to be owed to the state. That's something we owe to the state. And so we're going to have to put that into a liability account, which on the trustee TB trial balance is going to be up here, up top, not, not in the assets, but in the trial abilities here or the liabilities. And it's going to the California Department of Tax. That's who we owe. I'm going to select that item and that'll be the difference. I won't go into it again, but that's these three calculations for the string music. Scrolling back up, are we done yet? No, we're not done because we also have the inventory that needs to be going down. So inventory is up top. There's the inventory account. It needs to be decreasing. So the inventory account is going to be decreasing because we sold a guitar. And that's going to be the sales receipt here for string music. The amount we see on here is it's going down by 320. However, if I go to the sales receipt, I don't see the 320 anywhere on the sales receipt. How can that be? because uh, we don't want to show the customer what we paid for it, but the sales receipt is driving it. Well, how does the system know that it's 320 for the Epiphone semi hollow body? Well, we can then go to the data on the left and we go to the sales and we recall that when we, when we put the product in to the system and the product here, we had uh, the Epiphone semi hollow body and we put in the cost, which I think was this one for the 320. So that's how it that's how it knows. It's going to use the weighted average method to calculate that. So there it is. So let's close this out. We're going to close that one out and then we're going to scroll back up top. The other side of that is going to be in the cost of goods sold. So the cost of goods sold is going to be down below. There's the cost of goods sold expense going up, bringing down the net income. And there's the sales receipt once again for that 320. So I'm going to scroll back up. There it is. So it's e notice how easy it is to see on the trial balance. What if we were to see that same kind of thing in terms of the balance sheet and the income statement, the financial reports? All right, well, let's go to the balance sheet and say we know that the cash is going up, not rev not the checking account, but undeposited funds. Here's undeposited funds. It went up. It's in the assets section. So here's the sales receipt. It went up for the full amount of the 380. Going to scroll back up. The other side then of that transaction, you would typically think on the P&L, goes into the profit and loss. So I'll go into the P&L profit and loss report. And the sales went up. Here's the sales number, selecting that item. It went up by the string music. There's the 400. Only went up by the amount we charged, not including the sales tax. Difference between the two, going back to the report, is back on the balance sheet report in the liability section. So if we go down to the liability section in the balance sheet report, it's going to be in this item for the California Department of Tax. I won't go in there now. I'll just show you that. And then the other side of it is the asset going down. Up top, asset inventory is going down. Inventory asset decreasing. If we go into the inventory asset, we see the decrease to it. For the sales receipt on the bottom, there's the 320 that's not actually on the sales receipt. If we then go to the profit and loss, we see the other side of that, which will be in the cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold, selecting that, here's the sales receipt there for the 320. What's the effect on the profit and loss? Well, the income went up by the sales price, not including sales tax. And then the cost of goods sold is the cost of goods sold went up. And the difference between the two is the effect on net income. Also note, if we go back to the balance sheet, that there's a, a similar kind of effect that's going to happen on the inventory that the inventory is going to have to be supported by the sub schedules that's going to be tracking the units of inventory that we have still on hand as well as the cost of those units using the weighted average method.